Welcome back to Real Vision Crypto's After the Hype. Reality sets in for NFTs. After zooming in on NFT technology, we'll now zoom out a bit to the individuals using this technology. Sergio Silva, NFT collector and sales director for Fireblocks, welcomes the artist known as Mad Dog Jones to discuss his life as an NFT artist and the ways in which NFTs are creating tighter relationships and communities between artists and collectors. Hey everybody, I'm Sergio Silva. I'm an NFT collector. I'm here with Misha Dalbach, also known as Mad Dog Jones. One of the best yeah. known artists in the NFT space. Matt Doc, thank you so much for joining us for Real Vision today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I got the sunglasses on today, their prescription, and I don't have my other glasses. So I'm not trying to look cool, but, you know, it's just what happens. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Hey, listen, so Matt Doc, your artwork has been featured at Christie's, Sotheby's, and Philips. What does it feel like? What is that like for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, a bunch of my friends were like being like, hey, it's the Triple Crown or like whatever. I don't know, like making up names for it. I don't know. It's this whole year has been just so surreal and like things keep happening. And then you're it, it's crazy how kind of quickly you're mind calibrates and like things that like would have been like mind blowing are then kind of like normal but you have to like kind of normalize the craziness or else it's just too intense but then at moments like this when I kind of like step back and look at it it's like so mind-blowingly cool and exciting but like I try to keep myself calm in my day-to-day -day and not really like think about how extremely cool it all is just so I can like live a normal existence you know but um yeah it's it's like it's an honor like for sure and i i owe so much of it to people like you Sarito, and um it, it, it's to people like you who like really um really push the space and and bring them all of us together i guess it's a team team both of us together all right well let's take a let's take a step back who's misha doback and how did you find the nft space yeah well so I come from a family of artists in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, I was born and raised in like a rural community outside of a relatively small town, about 100,000 people, small city rather. And um, Thunder Bay is like a really isolated place. Um, there's no, like the closest major city is driving down to the US and that's five hours away to Minneapolis. And then the closest Canadian city is like eight hours to Winnipeg. So it's, it's really kind of just like a city in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, that kind of has its own kind of like isolated artist community. And my family was a big part of that. My father is a stained glass artist. So I grew up in a house that was like really like informed on like light and color and form. And that kind of growing up in an artist household is really where I kind of got my artistic sensibilities um a lot of painting a lot of art um my mother writes a lot of cool poetry and short stories so I always had these kind of like these elements of like light color form and story kind of embedded in me growing up and yeah I slowly slowly kind of drifted away from art because like it was like the family thing and I was like kind of like rebelling then I went into science and I got a degree in um, human kinetics. I did a full like cadaver dissection in university, did a bunch of like cool anatomy science and a bunch of uh, all kinds of physics and chemistry. And then I started working in that field for a little bit. And then I was just doing art on the side. And then like my art just kind of kept popping off and doing better and better and better until like the science career just kind of slowly like drifted away. And then like, I really couldn't, I couldn't stop being an artist. It just, it just like, the art then. yeah, it just, it just like, like it just kept being the viable financial path too, which was crazy. Cause like growing up, like it was always like, you know, making ends meet in the art world. But then like, I think the way I approached art was really like, you know, building relationships and trying to move out of my small town 
and onto kind of a global scale, which kind of brings us to NFTs where this is just the ultimate global community. There's, there's, there's no borders, there's no governments, there's no regulation. It's just like the open world of, of art and everybody coming from everywhere. Like shout out to Mondoir uh, and like some of the people from like overseas and they're just like coming in from like crazy places and you're just like, wow, this is so cool. Like all these different people and collectors and backgrounds and, I think the, the, the global community of NFTs was really one of the things that really interested me. And then, yeah, I think the people that got me into it, um, I had a friend in, in town, a local guy who runs a clothing shop, Mars Clothing in Thunder Bay. And he just sent me an email back in like maybe July of last year. Um, it was a link to Super Rare. And I think at the time, super rare is like total sales on their website was like, you know, like $75,000 or something like that. Or like, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a bit more than that. I don't remember exactly, but it was like a low, lowish number. Early and I was stages, looking at it. Early stages. Yeah. yeah in the early stages. And I remember looking at it going like, okay. And checking around the website and it being like, you know, people are selling things for like 500 bucks to like a thousand bucks. And I was like, okay, this is cool. And I was like, then I started just kind of keeping a temperature on it because at that point I was selling like my like commission rate for artworks was around 5,000 to 10,000 bucks, 4,000, 5,000 kind of depending on the project. And so I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on this and kind of like once it, once it heats up to like my, like my rate that I normally sell stuff at, that's when I want to jump in. I do want to fast forward to where we are today. Yeah, right. for sure. You sold your artwork on NFT has sold over eighteen point eight million dollars now. Your Philips wow. auction piece went for four point one million dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. We're talking a year of a difference. Yeah, no, it's it's insane. I remember, I remember just like working on contracts and like you know, you know, I remember thinking like, hey, if I could pull in, you know, a hundred. 150 grand this year on art that would just be like the craziest thing ever and like being like because i i really started kind of getting into some like real real professional stuff last year before nfts and i was like wow like you know what like i can real i just started seeing it as like a good career not just like i can like pay my rent career i was like you know what i can be a, a really solid professional in this space and i can I can make a living at this. And I was like starting to feel excited about art. And then NFTs came along and just kind of like blew that all open. And um, I'm just glad I was, you know, I, I, I was really locked in as an artist and as a professional. So I was like really glad I was able to kind of like, I already had the energy going and then the NFTs landed and I was like, just ready to like, just give it my all with me. And I have a great team with me too. So yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think it's great. I want to touch on two things that you mentioned, two different uh, parts of the community, right? Of the space. First, community. Yeah. Um, you talked about the people that got you in, the people that have you here. How has your art allowed you to continue to grow that global community you were alluding to earlier? And how has that changed your outlook on the art industry itself? It's just, it allows so many different people to be, um, you know, like I always love thinking about like incentives and like, you know, I, I always think about the people that, that buy my artwork, like why are they buying my artwork and having like motivations aligned. And I just love the idea of like a bunch of people going like, I'm on team mad dog. I like what he does. I'm going to get involved. And then they can kind of be like connected to my trajectory as an artist. And that just feels so fun. It's like kind of just having this whole like squad of people who like believe in you. And I like it because it kind of lights a fire under my ass. Cause now I'm like, okay, shit. I got all these people who are like, yeah, we believe in you, mad dog. Um, you go get it. And we're with you. And like, that's awesome. And I just love that feeling. And I love being able to like loop people in. And I know people are waiting for, um, for cats and all these interesting things to happen. And um, there's a lot of pressure and like, I'm really trying to do things right. 
and I'm trying to do it. I've always worked really slow in the past and the NFT space is now just this like rocket ship. So I'm trying to calibrate to like keeping my quality up and I'm really trying to keep, I'm really trying to keep what I do special. I don't want to cheapen things and I don't want to just do things for the sake of doing it. And I really want the people who like really believe in me to really be the ones that like get to like go on this wild ride with me. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.